This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real stars of today's show are the new lineup of products from Butt Kicker. It has been a while since I've said that, but new products from Butt Kicker, that being the Gamer Plus and the Gamer Pro Butt Kicker devices, as well as the all new Hapti Connect software from Butt Kicker. And I'll tell you, I've been using Butt Kickers in various different applications on many, many different rigs for 15 years now. I've tried them in every configuration one butt kicker, two butt kickers, left and right or front and back, four butt kickers, one at each corner. I've driven them by audio. I've driven them by third party software, which could be sometimes expensive and usually very difficult to operate. But it is the dawn of a new era. It is the revolution. I keep saying that product by product, these new direct drive wheels, high end steering wheels, so many new equipment, pieces of equipment for sim racers. It is the revolution or the dawn of the new era. And I'll keep saying it. But here we are with new products from Butt Kicker, and these being USB controlled Butt Kicker haptic or tactile transducer devices for your sim rig. So we are talking about an all new design. We're talking about a newly designed shaker with a much more substantial, much more beefy clamping system on both units. We're talking about more streamlined wiring for sure. Newly upgraded amplifiers, including digital displays, and being able to remember your configurations, which is something some of the old butt kickers didn't do. You turned it off and it forgot your settings. These always remember where they were. And a whole bunch of new features packed into both of these new units, as well as that software eliminating the need for other third-party software. And again, taking those physics from the game and turning them into synchronized vibrations for your sim rig. So going through the various models that we have here, they are almost identical in so many ways. So when we look inside of the box, it's pretty much the same routine. You've got the instructions themselves. You've got some wiring for USB and audio connections. You've got the remote control. You've got the shaker itself, obviously the Pro being the larger of the two shakers. And you've got the amps, which are exactly the same size with the Plus model putting out 90 watts while the Pro model puts out 150 watts. Now let's talk about the differences between the two models. You've got the Gamer Plus, which is $279.95, and you've got the Gamer Pro, which is $329.95. Both shakers are 75 to 250 watt capacity. Now they're both fairly heavy, with the Plus coming in at 8.93 pounds, but the Pro model coming in at 11 pounds, and an even bigger difference on the inside, with the moving mass inside of the Plus model being six ounces of moving mass versus the full pound of moving mass on the Pro model. On the Plus model, you're looking at about a three and a half inch round circle. And this really cool, I like the styling, the typical butt kicker, little ribbed or cooling vents, and you got the black and silver finish and the much beefier cord pre-installed on the Plus version, along with this new super duper beefy clamp. Very, very substantial clamp. It'll go up to 1.77 inches, which is 45 millimeters. And on the Plus version, you do have the tri-mount, the tri-mount bolt pattern that typical old butt kickers had as well. On the Pro model, it's much larger. You're looking at about four and a half inches round, about four inches tall. It's the same black and silver finish, the same butt kicker look, but it has these cool high-end gold plated plugs or terminals for your wiring. Same exact clamp on both, and you can see it's a much more streamlined clamp than when comparing it to the old Gamer 2 model. Now looking at the amplifiers, they look identical at on appearance. They're both eight inches wide, nine inches deep, and a little under three inches tall. And they both feature the exact same wireless remote, which is another upgrade over previous models. You can see they now have the display for the volume and for the frequency cutoff, and it's mostly push buttons. So it's a very easy layout and an upgraded amp. Again, 90 watts on the plus, 150 watts on the pro model. And another nice feature about both amps that Butt Kicker is calling fanless cooling, I'll just call them silent. They don't make any noise other than the shakers, which can be quite loud. 
Now, another feature they have in this lineup is the Hapti Connect software. And this software is, again, revolutionary for butt kicker and it is a game changer as far as controlling your haptic devices from butt kicker. And again, it turns physics into haptics or into transducer vibration and it operates much like a motion sim. It'll transmit physics like road noise, engine RPM, brake lockup, rumble strips, and more. Hapti Connect uses hand-tuned plugins that are built by Butt Kicker that really optimize the shakers and the amps for each and every sim, but they are on kind of limited supply with launch. So there are two versions of Hapti Connect that you can get. You get the standard version, which comes with either of the Butt Kickers when you purchase them. And that comes with the three launch plugins, which is iRacing, Assetto Corsa, and Dirt Rally 2.0. There's also the premium version, which goes for $59.95, and it comes with those three titles, as well as any future updates or titles that they make to the Hapti Connect. If you got the standard version, you can always add new titles for anywhere from $2.99 to $9.99 a la carte, depending on if it's a game or sim that you like. And in the future, we could be talking beyond sim racing, like flight sims, RPGs and other types of games. So there is more in the future of this software. When it comes to the hardware side of the installation, it is really identical regardless of which kit you're talking about. And it starts with clamping the shaker to your rig. And in the case of modern rigs, almost every rig I can think of nowadays comes with a literally a butt kicker mount, a post that bolts onto your rig that allows you to clamp a butt kicker onto it. And that is the perfect connection for adding either of these to your rigs. In the case of the plus version, you do have the bolt on. So if you have three holes in that triangle pattern, you can direct bolt this one. Unfortunately, the pro version doesn't have that. You only have the clamp on. And again, that clamp will open up to about one and three quarter inches, which means you can put it on like a one, one inch piece of profile. If it gets bigger than one and three quarter, it won't fit on that or on a round bar. But you wanna clamp the shaker to your rig, and then you'll connect the quick connector to the long cord, which then plugs into the amp with the banana clip side, red to red, black to black. Plug the power cord into the amp, plug the USB cable into the amp, and then plug the USB cable into your PC. And if you wanna run audio as an option, you can use the splitter and run that audio input as well. Flip the power on the back, turn on the power in the front, and then as advised by Butt Kicker, turn off the low filter cutoff and dial the high filter to 80 as per the instructions. As you can see, the hardware side is pretty basic, pretty simple to put together. And when it comes to doing the software, it's pretty much the same thing. This whole thing is plug and play or one, two, three. You're gonna wanna download the software from thebuttkicker.com. And when you do, you can fire up that software and get it installed. When you do, at the top bar, you will see a Hapti Connect tab along with an Audio Connect tab. But today we are focusing on that Hapti Connect tab. And when there, you will wanna click on the configure in red. Select your configuration, which can be mono, aka one shaker, two shakers in the left or right positions, or front and back configuration, along with four corners. Select your audio channel for the butt kicker. In my case, for a mono, it would be speakers, butt kicker plus, and here you can see that your system actually sees it as a sound card. If you're using more than one shaker, you would then select your second audio channel. And essentially you're all done. I mean, you could then hit the back tab and you can click on any of the game tabs and look at or play with any of the adjustments or settings, but we'll cover all that later. So at this point, we have all the hardware set up, the software's all configured, and we've really made no adjustments to the individual sittings. We are literally at stock configuration. So this thing, when you turn it on, it was at 50 full volume. And we're gonna see just exactly what this thing feels like. So I get in the car. Right there we have just some engine RPM. You can hear, can you hear that? All right, let's rev the engine. You can feel that all the way throughout the sim. Oh, that's road noise. So 
So without making any adjustments, we just took our sim to uh, a different level. It is now an active sim. We are getting some amazing effects that are timed with the car, not just based on the audio. So if anybody's run a butt kicker on audio source only, it, it works for certain cars, but then other cars, they make no noise or other tracks that are so smooth, they make no noise. We are still getting those effects because it's coming out of the game engine itself. Right now, I'm not even running in headphones. The audio, the effects, I'm not even sure if I'm hearing it or feeling it. I can hear it too, but I can hear my engine RPM right now. I can hear what the car's doing with the road, with the friction of the road there. I can feel the gear shifts. Uh, I mean, it's actually quite amazing because if I just take my headphones off, it's impossible for me to drive with any kind of pace whatsoever. And here I am at Sebring in the Ferrari Evo, and I am, you know, throttle to the floor, driving my line, and not doing terrible. Ooh, we got some, you hear that? Oh, did you hear that? A little curbing effect. So just on default settings, and, and the reason I, I'm demonstrating this is just to see what it feels like the minute you turn it on. And the other reason is because some people might not want to do a lot of tinkering. Maybe just taking advantage of the plug and play advantage of this unit is good enough uh, and just turn it on. And, and you know, look at this. It's, this is definitely changing my sim and the way it feels and giving it more activity, giving it more immersion, giving it more intensity. And we haven't done anything but turn it on. Now I know we can tweak all of those settings, all those parameters like RPM, road noise, acceleration, wheel lockup, gear shift, curbing, but this is just default settings and, and it's really, really good out of the box. With the Hapti Connect software, you can really tune the settings to get the best experience for you. Everybody has their own perception of what a car should feel like when being driven, and we're handling a lot of effects from the game because it is physics driven. So you do want to be able to change those settings to get it exactly tailored to your best interest. And there are a few ways to go about it. The other thing, and I've mentioned it a few times already, is this can also be a great driving aid or driving tool. So depending on what you're doing, you might make a setup that is purely for training. You might make a setup that is really for entertainment because your friend's coming over to drive your sim. And you might have some settings that you use when you're actually going to be doing some racing and you're really adjust. You just want the best experience for you out of your rig. So let me show you the software and what you can do in the best way I find to tune it. And we'll get to where I like to, how I like a tune to be or somewhere in the ballpark of that. So when you look at the software, and we're here for iRacing, and the effects we can adjust are RPM, rumble strip, simulated road texture, gear shift, acceleration, collisions, suspension, wheel lock, wheel slip, shift indicator warning. Now the best way to separate and find out what you're really feeling when is to turn things off and isolate the effects. So what I mean by that is Right here with these toggles, I can actually turn off every single effect and leave on RPM. Now the only thing the butt kicker is going to translate from physics into vibration is the RPM. You can hear it right now. It's still vibrating. That never went away because we're on pit lane. And if I rev the engine, you're going to hear it. Now, how much RPM do I want to feel when I'm driving the car? You know, and some of that is at speed. I mean, well, at speed will be your road noise. But is that the kind of... Now, if I want it to be quieter, you know, I, or so to speak, we'll use that word a lot, we can turn it down. So it started at 50, and you can he hear just a difference in the rig. Right here, I'm not even feeling much at idle. Let me put it in neutral. And I can get the hint of... So we're 37... Right about there, we're in the 40s, and now we can start to feel a little more. On the other hand, you go up to 100, and it'll rattle your rig. 
Oh. It shut down. And you can turn it up and you can hear it gets... Well, that's louder than I want my rig to be. Whoa, yeah, that's way too loud. So, you can adjust it to just how much you want. Now, of course, this is a symphony of parts. We're going to be adjusting them individually, and then we can start making balance changes once we're happy. So, starting with the RPM, I can tell you a little higher than that. Maybe about right there. All right. Rumble strips. We're at Sebring. This is a great one to do this with. So default is 50%. We're trying to get the most. Tailor this thing for the way we want it to really give us the best experience. So we're going to find some rumble strips. And I felt a rumble there. I tell you what, I like a lot of rumble strips. So let's crank that up. Find another rumble strip on the track to deal with. Oh, there we go. Now we're getting some rocking out of it. We've cranked that one up to... What's our number? 75. 75. Oh, you know what? That's actually probably more than we need. Yeah, it's more than we need. Alright. 65. Oh, that might be good. Yeah, there we go. That feels good. Alright, so tentatively we can go like that. And one by one, you can get the effects that you want. We'll go to simulated road texture. This is how much noise the ground is going to make. You know, I might want just a little less. It's such a constant. Go to 45 on that one. It's just that low rumble, constant low rumble of the road as your car rolls along it. All right. Now, gear shift, like rumble strips, this is one of those ones, it's a combination of entertainment and it helps me. So, I'm one of those people who will miss shift sometimes. Uh, maybe I'm an early downshift and the car will ignore my request for downshift. I'm feeling a thud. Can you hear that thud now that we've isolated that? Crank that up. There you go. That might be too strong. Or is that just right? Okay, let's turn that down. Put it at 60. That seems to be a good number. All right. Acceleration. Now, acceleration is interesting. Acceleration is sort of like a G-force effect. And it's actually a little annoying to me. And if you want a good example of it being annoying, we'll crank it up. Um, if you're heavy on the brakes, if you're heavy on the gas, it's acceleration. It is forward and backward motion. And I find it most annoying. So we're going to turn that one way down. We could almost turn it off, but we'll just turn it down. All right, collisions. Collisions, you know what? iRacing, most sims really underdo collisions. So let's see. Yeah, we can crank that all the way up. I knew that from uh, pre previous previous experience. Collisions are just really lightly done in sim, so we're gonna leave that one full power, that's fine. Suspension, all right, uh, let's fix our car real quick. There you go, off-roading. Ah, that's getting us our road noise off-road. So I'll tell you, yeah, all right. All right, we're gonna leave suspension pretty high, actually. I like that. And wheel lock up. All right. Wheel lock up is a good one too. So when you have trouble locking up the brakes, this wheel lock up is like getting chatter in your steering wheel when the wheels lock up. So we'll slam on the brakes. Oh, all right. Did you hear it? If we crank that up, it'll be a lot. All right, slam on the brakes. Hear that? When the wheels are locked up, You can use it as your own built-in ABS. We'll talk about that here in a second. All right, I like I like a lot of wheel lock-up chatter. Same thing with, with wheel slip. There, can you hear it? When we get loose. Oh, a little too loose. <laughs> 
Oh, but that's giving us the effect of uh, wheel slip. Yeah. Just a little hint. There you go. I like that. I like that effect a lot. I think we're good right there, actually. And then lastly, a shift indicator warning, which this is one that I don't want to use too much because I have so many other effects. I don't want to confuse my brain. Um, let's hear it come into play. Let's crank it up to really isolate it so that we can really tell when it's happening. It's giving us a little thud, much like the gear shift in advance or telling us time to shift. So we don't need it that strong though. We can turn that. What do we have our gear shift at? This was at 60. Okay, so now we've actually dialed in everything individually to where we thought we'd like it. Now let's turn on all of our symphony. Every piece of the orchestra playing and give it a whirl. Is that road texture that's a little too much? Oh, this is much more uh, active than default. Again, I'm driving without headphones. All right, there's one effect that's a little too strong. Is it RPM? Yeah, I think our RPM is just a little too high. I love the gear shift. Whoa, forgot where I'm going. I got that screen blocking me a little. Here we go. Maybe a teeny tiny bit more. There we go. Okay. There you go. We have a really good balance of effects. We're getting, we're feeling the life of the car through the RPM. We're feeling the life of the track through the road texture. We're feeling the rumble strips because it's just too cool. We're getting that really good, firm, crisp acknowledgement of a shift occurring. We're really not tapping too much into the acceleration and braking force. We're allowing that to happen more through our settings for suspension and wheel lock and wheel slip. And then in case we forget to shift, we do get an extra vibration telling us, hey buddy, time to shift the car. So we've really got a great balance of entertainment and function overlaying together. So the last thing I'm gonna say before we finish the tuning, because I'm pretty happy with these settings and I'll uh, give you a good screenshot there so you can see what they are. But one other thing I'm gonna say is, this can also be used very much as a driving tool. So for example, let's turn off the RPM, that's entertainment. Let's turn off the rumble strips, that's entertainment. Road texture, entertainment. Gear shift indicator, I'm gonna call that entertainment right now. Acceleration, collisions, suspension. And we're gonna leave these bottom three on. And we're actually gonna crank them up even higher. So we're at 75, 80, and 57. We're gonna crank them up. And the reason I'm showing you this specifically is if you just to do these and you use this just for training, you're having a hard time. Maybe you're uh, sliding the car, coming off corners and spinning out a lot. Maybe you are uh, having a hard time with braking and you're locking them up and going off the track. Or maybe you're not shifting in time. Well, with these three turned up, we can go out and use them as a warning. Shift. Don't forget to shift, Sean. And it will help you tune yourself to the engine sound or the dash lights or whatever you're using. I mean, I use them all as a reference. But it will tune you into the timing of the car. Same thing goes under braking. Have a hard time with threshold braking? Oh, little built-in mental ABS. 
Same thing goes coming off the corner. You know, whoop, 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 whoop. Are you having trouble getting loose? Are you getting a little exaggerated there? But if you're having trouble, you know, with a loose car, using that wheel slip indicator is going to help you really focus on that effect. There it is, my warning shift. All right, so we have just our real warning. And you could always just leave these three settings extra heavy. All right, we'll try to get loose. There it is. Do you hear that? That was well as a little shift indicator too. I'll try to get loose in one, a little hard without audio, but. Yeah. Oh. There you go. So again, it could be done for training, it could be done for entertainment, and it could just be done for overall driving experience. Now, after you've spent the time to really get it dialed in for whatever your favorite sim, I mean, I did some testing in Dirt Rally 2.0, and I did some testing in Assetto Course and verified that everything did in fact work. But when it came to really, really dialing it in, I spent most of my time on iRacing. And you get it to that point where you get all the effects exactly to the point that you want. And like you heard that, oh, that was just a rumble strip. And I just love a heavy rumble strip effect. And getting it so you're getting just the right amount of road noise so that that sim is alive. Just enough RPM to feel something. So when you pull over and you put it in neutral and you just rev the engine, you feel it. Not too much. I don't want it to rock the sim, but I want to feel a subtle vibration. You can hear it there and I can feel it there. Same thing with the road noise. I don't want to be overwhelmed, but I want to feel it to know that there is motion happening with the car. But I could really crank up those effects that I love the most and get it to where it's not rattling my teeth out. It's not rattling the sim to the point where it sounds like it's going to fall apart. But I do have a few moments where it will peak, like rumble strips. You can hear that firm gear shift and other things like, uh, we'll try to lock up the brakes here. Oh, you heard another rumble strip there and a little brake lock up. So I have it to the point where I got to tell you, I'm just in heaven. I have it so perfect. I'm getting so many added sensations. It's timed beautifully with the force feedback of the steering wheel into one beautiful symphony of audio, video, sound, vibration, force feedback, my whole symphony is really expanding to a whole new level of immersion, a whole new layer of sensation, and hitting you just at a different level than just audio alone. And again, I feel some people will set it up more for entertainment, maybe a little bit more just, uh, maybe more engine noise, because they want that shock and awe of the car being alive. But for me, it's a tool. It's a driving aid, and I'd even dare say it's a cheat. I've got that ABS, well, it's not ABS. On a non-ABS car, I get sensations that let me know to ease up on those brakes. I get sensations of the rear end breaking loose. I get all these added features that make me a better driver, and that's why I call them almost driving aids. Almost a tool to be a better sim racer. Almost, I dare say, a cheat. And now, as much as it's not technically a motion simulator, well, it is a motion simulator. It's moving it on a microscopic level. If we were to put a micrometer on it, there is motion happening in my sim now. But you could definitely call it a poor man's motion sim. It adds so much more that you'd swear there was now motion involved by the time your inner ear gets used to it, by the time you're really in sync with the monitors and driving you'd swear you had a little motion going on in the rig. It's that alive now. And another thing that I do want to mention or talk about, right here I'm actually running the Gamer Plus, not the Gamer Pro. And I only am running it at about 35% volume. I have a very heavy rig and I am on carpet and my, my rig is actually not just on carpet but on little sliders on the carpet. So there's about a, a nice amount of isolation on my rig away from the floor. So most of the effects are being put right into my rig and you can hear that they are very strong. Now the Pro, the Pro 
almost felt like it was double the strength. It's not quite, but it almost felt like it was double the strength of this one. And, and quite honestly, I don't think it's even, I think for the weight of this rig, it's probably just overkill. Uh, I would probably just say, hey, save your money. Go with the plus model. Unless you have a monstrosity of a rig, the plus model is going to be a lot more affordable. Well, not a lot. A bit more affordable and plenty of shaker for your rig. Uh, now, it also leaves you a little bit of budget. So if you ever want to consider going to two with a left and right or a front and back setup, or if you were, you know, even so inclined to go with a four shaker setup, which is amazing, but definitely uh, more than most people need. And the final thing I'm going to say, and I think I'm getting a little repetitive, but it has changed my sim. It's a combination of that entertainment factor that just made my, my sim so much more exciting to drive. It really is more exciting to drive. And it has all those added benefits. I mean, just think about the difference between like a a good force feedback wheel and an old not so good force feedback and how much more information you got from the wheel now i'm getting it again in the seat of my pants which which that's the bottom line that's one of the things we're missing the most in sim racing is that seat of the pants people say it all the time now we're still missing the g-force balance inner ear part of seat of the pants but we are now getting effects to the seat of the pants and it does take things to a whole different level. I think that tells you everything you need to know about the Butt Kicker Gamer Plus, the Gamer Pro, the Hafty Connect software, and this whole beautiful lineup from Butt Kicker. But just to make it perfectly clear, just to break it down, let's go through the, the good, the not so good, and the bottom line, starting off with the good. And this is the best, cheapest, substantial upgrade that you can make to your sim very easy to install very easy software increased intensity increased immersion wireless remote super affordable motion <laughs> can make you faster digital displays remembers your settings no second sound card needed lower profile design Long enough wires to place the amp where I wanted. Will work with audio only, including non-supported titles and working on consoles via audio. And now on to the not so good, and that being that there are now still a limited amount of titles to choose from. We are going to have more. I've talked to Buck Kicker. They're definitely making that change, so we'll see some updates there. The next thing would be that the clamp is a little smaller than I'd like it to be. I'd like it to open up for a little bit larger, accommodate two inch tubing perhaps. That'd be a nice addition. And then finally, and this is really more focused on the pro model in that it doesn't have the direct bolt mount. You're limited to only the clamp mount. And I think since it's designed for larger rigs, it might actually be wanted by some of those people for that application. So that does take us to the bottom line. And as you can tell, just by looking at the good and the not so good list, the good list is tremendously long. There are so many wonderful features. There are so many wonderful things about either of these models. And the biggest difference is really a matter of what size is your rig. I mean, if we were to compare the two, they're really identical. I mean, you might get a little bit quicker response out of this one because of the smaller amount of mass that it's moving. But this one has so much more thump that it's gonna work for heavier rigs. If you have an all metal rig, you have a direct drive wheel, you've got a shifter, you've got all sorts of equipment on there. You might be in a scenario where you want the large one, but even on my R seat, I was able to run the pro, the plus model and get plenty of power out of this one. I didn't even need to turn it up at all the time for all of the circumstances. It worked out really well for me. Now, again, focusing on the not so good, you do have the limited amount of titles. Again, each plug-in is hand tailored or hand built or hand designed to use the shaker and the amp specific from Butt Kicker. But we will see more in the future. I've talked to them about it again, and they are 
going to have more titles soon coming for that $299 to $999 per plugin if you need one in the future. The other thing is right now, like you, I was using a beta version of the software. I couldn't save a profile, but I know that's something else they were addressing, so I'm not sure if it's in this latest build, but it is something in the near future, so we will see updates from Buttkicker on the Hapti Connect software. But here's where it really makes a big difference for me, the ease of use. Uh, being able to sew just with a tab, just slider, road noise, all of the conditions, have the whole system be plug and play, not having to use third party software, makes it so easy. It makes it much more approachable for your average sim racer getting into sim racing. And if they're going to be adding a butt kicker, you don't have to become a scientist and start learning how to write code. Maybe it's not always that complicated, but it is very easy. One, two, three, plug and play system here. Now, when I consider the new price, looking specifically at the plus, you're looking at an $80 increase. So that $279.95 is $80 more expensive than the current price of the Gamer 2 model. But when I think of all the new features, I think of the remote, I think of the displays, I think about it remembering my settings, I think about the more robust clamp and then getting the Hapti Connect software included and having physics driven vibration on my rig. That is the cheapest $80 that I can possibly think of. And then the additional price is just a matter of how much weight, how much rig are you trying to move? The other nice thing is it does work with multiple shakers. So if you want to go back to that old style of putting two, one on the left and right side of the rig for like rumble strips, or if you want to go front and rear, or you want to put one at all four corners, you can totally do that with the Hapti Connect. I tested with two and it was a nice added bonus, but it's probably not something that everybody has to do more for those super over the top rigs where you just can't keep adding enough stuff to them. So in closing, if you've had a butt kicker in the past, you know what I'm talking about. This is just the cleanest, coolest version of butt kicker ever with really easy software. Now, if you've never used a butt kicker before, I gotta tell you, your rig is almost like it's silent. It is silent. I've always said with a butt kicker, if I drove with a butt kicker for a few days and you turned off my butt kicker, I'd say, who turned off my SIM? I still have headphones, I still have visual, but without this shaking, it would almost be like you turned me off. I can tell you, it's one of those things that once you've had it for a few days, you could not take it away without being very, very upset. It's mind blowing, it's game changing, and if used properly, it can even make you faster. And it's really hard to ask for more out of a product than that. And I gotta tell you, bang for buck, it's probably the best upgrade you can do for your SIM chassis. So I think that tells you everything you need to know about the new Butt Kicker Gamer Pro and Game Gamer Pro and Gamer Plus shakers from Butt Kicker along with that Hapti Connect software. You can check it out for yourself at thebuttkicker.com. And then, of course, if you want to help support the show, check us out at patreon.com forward slash the simpit. If you help support the show, you can take place in our patron races, be part of our giveaways, and sometimes even get advanced viewing of some of our videos. Be sure to check us out at Twitch at Simpit Live, where on Fridays we have our coffee, sim news, and sim racing show. And of course, we're going to be adding more live shows to that lineup as well. And of course, be sure to thumbs up this show if you liked it. Be sure to subscribe so you can find out when our next video comes out. And most of all, get out there and do some sim racing. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.